I'm Kira858, and we're here with our brand new campaign, Reclamation Season 1, Episode 11. We're glad to have you with us as we continue the story of House Chiron. We're going to jump right into the session, but first, let's have everyone introduce themselves, say who they are, who they're playing, and uh, any projects that they're working on. And we'll start first, of course, uh, we'll start first this time with Reeve. Reeve, would like to talk about yourself who you're playing. Oh my goodness, of course. Um, so I am playing uh, Kashra de Chiron, the elder of this house, and ideally the person keeping everyone together and reasonable. But we'll see if that's actually true or not. Um, I, on the other hand, can be found on Twitter and all the other socials at Big Dude Re, um, all one word, where you can find out a full list of all the cool things I'm up to. But the most pressing at the moment, I guess, is um, the Reroll Stitch Channel, where we're doing Arithian Knights and uh, guiding a group of wonderful. Um, people through D and seeing what chaos they can cause, and uh, there's a new show that's going to be coming soon that you should be keeping an eye out on. I'm, I'm told it's going to be exciting, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Perfect. Uh, next, we have the fantastic Adrian, aka Aries. Who'd like to talk about yourself? Who you're playing and projects you're working on? <laughs> hey, folks. I'm Adrian, and yeah, you can find me here on the cookout or over at the beer pin. I am playing Jethrin Cloudpool, the Leon Paladin Barbarian here in this campaign, which is real great. You'll find me on all the socials at the Adrian Bear. And probably when this comes out, I actually think Blood in the Bayou season three, book three probably is, will have started, I think. Mm, I don't think so, because this will be coming out in May. This yeah. episode? Yeah, this okay, episode will well, Either way, mm. uh, probably the third week of June, Blood in the Bayou Book 3 comes back. We lift on a big old cliffhanger. So y'all have time to uh, jump in and rewatch and everything. And also, uh, yeah, I am the storyteller for Thala Unbound, our D&D campaign over at the Beer Pin. Um, yeah, and everyone there is fantastic and everyone here is fantastic. Uh, let's play. Perfect. Um, unfortunately, I see that I got my sheet messed up. Uh, this is not episode 11. This is episode 12. So just a quick clarification of that aspect. Uh, thanks for the heads up, uh, Aaron, for keeping me straight. I appreciate that. Uh, with that said, <laughs> we're going to transition over to a die. If you'd like to talk about yourself, who you're playing, or projects you're working on. Yeah, hi, I'm Di. You can find me on the socials at Dichromaniac, mostly Twitter. Um, I'm playing uh, Mayor, Middle Child, Disaster, who has uh, figured out that maybe there's a little bit more to her than even she knew. Um, as far as future projects, keep an eye on my Twitter. There's a lot of fun stuff coming out. You can also catch me on Fridays right now on Thala Unbound uh, with Adrian as well. And yeah. Perfect. Next, we have our fantastic DM, Zach. You'd like to talk about yourself, who you're playing, and our projects you're working on. Of course. You know, I'm going to be playing a few different characters tonight, the most important one being Timmons. And uh, you can naturally find me everywhere on the internet <laughs> at Wander Text, um, is my screen name. Um, got a lot of exciting projects coming up. So definitely, uh, definitely look forward to those. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, uh, speaking of uh, Aaron, if you'd like to talk about yourself, who you're playing and uh, projects you're working on. I am Aaron or Feld Flames. You can find me in a lot of places at Z Halo Musings. I do some writing, some really cool stuff. Today I'll be playing the chorus. No, actually, I'm Timmons, the best, most self satisfied butler via the brush from death last time. I'm also the DM for Rivenwood Academy and hopefully a, a like space fantasy secret role game that will be coming out fairly soon, depending on how that goes. Ooh, so excited for that. I, I love how you even had the tagline of, <laughs> of I played the cards because that's what he, he also normally says. Um, as, as for yours truly, I'm Kara858. Uh, I play Abrea, uh, the sweet bean who is seeing quite a few of their family members drop it and try super hard to keep them up and running. Uh, 
same the same things are looking relatively scary at the moment but of course you can be able to find all of our content here at the cookout ttrpgs as well as our twitch channel which is a uh, uh, kira 858 if you like uh some uh a harry potter like vibe without the bigotry of course a reclamation was mentioned we have a bi-weekly campaign called gods of color that appears on our twitch channel as well we are pretty sure we have the first and perhaps only six tuplets campaign in DD history uh with fractured destiny and we have a Diab diablo like vibe type campaign that comes on on sundays called miss light and shadow and then, of course i'm on a couple other shows like re-rolls as well as uh, the bear pen so just keep up keep keep up with all of our content on uh, twitter at the kira 858 uh, as well as um the cookout ttrpgs uh, in terms of announcement we only have one announcement and that is of course Gods of Color, which we just recently mentioned, has a brand new dice set that just came out from Die Hard Dice called the Prismatic Pantheon. You should be able to see a, a, a link in the description section below. And if you use the promo code COOKOUT, that is C-O-O-K-O-U-T, that will give you a discount off your purchase. And you too will be rolling like a demigod. Um, safe to say, uh, I normally have pretty good dice luck but with that dice set only one time i rolled below a 10 so i vow never to use that against my players and only use it as a pc <laughs> take it as you will with that said we're going to go ahead and transition to our fantastic dm zach zach take it away so last we had left off on reclamation everyone in the party had died mm -hmm. oh sorry mm -hmm. um I skipped ahead in my notes a little bit. Um, <laughs> everyone in the party had just survived an encounter uh, with a group of strange lightning-throwing demons. Um, and um, with that uh, being said, several people being very low on life, having suffered injuries, and a strange blade having appeared in Meravina's hand. I would toss it back to you all. I still like have I still have Timmons in my arms, just for clarification. I have not put her down yet. Superman, Superman slash Supergirl pose <laughs> makes sense. Uh, Abrea is just going to run up to everyone. Is everyone okay? Uh, uh, is anyone hurt? Oh, hurt? Oh, everyone looks hurt. I'm, I, I'm fine. I'm worried about Timmons and Shay. Uh, can you move? We should rest. Did you, you were take a, a rest and then take a break and try, try to recover? I mean, I could still do some healing, but, um, I, I, that was hard. We'll rest here for now. Mm -hmm. I will keep watch near the, the entrance of this path, I suppose. The rest of you take time to recover. Make sure Timmons is all right. Hmm. Uh, I will keep an eye out. I, I can say I still could do some healing. So if, if, if anyone starts to feel really bad, please just let me know. Of course. Are, Are you all right, Miss Timmons? Uh, she'll kind of like slowly like roll out of the hold that Jethrin has her in and kind of get to her feet, but she keeps an arm on him to kind of lean against. Well, I can't say that that was fun, Sir Jethrin, but you did well. You scared me. And you protected Aubrea. Thank you. Please don't do that again. Well, where it can be avoided, I will do my best. I think I've got some tea somewhere around here. No, 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 no. You sit down. I'll make tea. Yeah, and she does. And I will do Timon's regular duties. Um, a question, Zach. We yeah. had decided the lion's stick around time is 10 minutes now? Uh, for the moment, yeah. Okay, so the lion is still up. So the lion is patrolling the room, just walking around in circles. 
You don't want to send it forward to scout or anything? Just leave it here for now? It is here to keep us safe. Okay. Yeah, um, you command it, and um, what it does is, if you've ever, for anyone who has seen a lion on the prowl, it begins to pace back and forth in the entrance to the next room while very carefully watching the um, the way forward. Did those things leave anything behind while I'm busy giving out tea to everyone? There's a few tails, I believe, but the rest of them, I think, disappeared. Oh, pull up the splits. Mary, what is that? Uh, what what did you do? I I never seen you do that before. This is. I I don't know. I just I couldn't let it continue. We, everyone was so hurt, and Timmons and Shay, and I was so worried that you and Kashad would be next. And before I knew it, I just I just couldn't tolerate it anymore. Had to do something, and it just happened. I, what, what's your magic like when you do it? Well, when I, f- I feel like I reach out to like the air, the stars. And the things that's around me, I, I I I ask nature to help me do things that I would like to do, and then nature usually answers my call. That's why I love it so much. That's lovely. This it wasn't like that though. It wasn't. It, I didn't ask for anything, and I didn't call out to anyone and nothing answered it it was more like it just was all inside of me it died yes roll me an inside check oh okay oh it's a 13 for those a oh zero that's a 13 Are we considering this a short race, by the way? I'm presuming so, right? You haven't completed it yet, but you yeah, have started. I, I'm just you have start. You have started short resting as you are conversing. All right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, it feels like family, Di. It. It just felt like it was us and. You and me and Kashad and our mother and and Timmons and Shay and uh, Jethrin and all of just us. It, it was our family together. And maybe maybe how nature is a source of your power. Maybe family means that to me, I, I I don't know. This this happened five minutes ago. I'm. I, I think I need to think. Yeah, I don't want to pressure you. I was just kind of curious. I just I never saw you do that before. So I was like, wow. I, was she hiding this the entire time? I was like, oh, okay. So that I just you know I would tell you, and you know I would tell Kashad, of course. No, this this is as much of a surprise to me as it is to all of you. Mm. Whatever it is, I'm grateful for it. Yeah, I t- tell tell your feelings of family. I say thank you for saving us. <laughs> mm. I'd do anything for y'all. Mm. Oh, oh. Do you want me to send a hawk to look around the area to see what's around? Oh, did I have a hawk or an owl? No, I think I have an owl. Yeah, it was an owl because it was dark in here. Yeah, it was an owl. So my apologies. Uh, yeah, hey, Timmons. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Aubrey, Aubrey, I finished. I completely interrupted you. That was my bad. Oh, no worries. Uh, do, do you want me to send my owl out to take a look and see what's around? Maybe, maybe we should ask Ashad. I'm not sure what our next moves are. If we should, if there's something in there forward that the owl would alert them to our presence, maybe not quite yet. Owls are usually really sneaky. They're, they're, they're night creatures, so they like to stay in the night and then hunt their prey. But yeah, who knows what type of eyesight people have in here. I could ask Kashada if you want. I just want to make sure we don't get surprised attack while we're resting. I don't know if I've ever asked you this, Abrea, but are you able to uh, summon? Is that is that what you do? Are you able to summon a rat? I could do a, I could do a rat, but a rat would see as well as an owl. But I, a rat would be less conspicuous in the middle of a underground dungeon. That's true. Wait, oh yeah, because owls wouldn't be here. Yeah. No. Well, well, first I, I, I could ask a shot. Do you, you, so you want me to ask a shot, right? I'll ask him. And they'll kind of like stand up and say, Everyone, if anyone starts to feel hurt again, please let me know. And they'll like kind of like rub their hands against their their knees and stand up and then make their way over to Kishad. Real quick before you have a word with Kishad, Timmons, um, roll me a general intelligence check. Oh, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll do it. It is. You Under do not protest. have. You do not have the keen mind feed, correct? I do not. It's something that I'm hoping to work for, but I haven't done it yet. Then, unfortunately, generalized intelligence is the only way to access your memory. What's uh, now one? history? Is this, now history. Is it, I'm at least proficient in history. Is it, it is. It is not of historical significance. It is mm-hmm. of Fair personal enough. significance. So it relies on your memory. Fair enough. Which is the enhanced <laughs> ability for intellect? Um, is it is it fox's fox, cunning? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. A twelve. A twelve. Mm-hmm. You know, nice you middle know, of the road number. You can't. I'm gonna I'm gonna DM you. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna DM you. All right, all right, uh, Abrea, all right. Abrea, Abrea, go ahead and proceed. I think Abrea might be fetching food. Yeah. No. So Abrea starts to make their way over to to Kashat. As the dudes are like, uh, Kashat, uh, do I can send like an owl or a rat to take a look and see if there's anybody coming this direction or the, the to to examine the area. I can look through it too. Do you want me to send an animal to take a peek? Have you seen any animals in this cave or prison since we've been here? Uh, have we? Have there been any animals? Have We've you? barely gone in. Oh, yeah, true. Um, well, we, we haven't really gone in that far. Usually caves like this, usually would, would definitely have rats. So rats for sure. This was, hmm? this was a prison for deity. I doubt they have rats wandering around. Oh, wow. They wouldn't have any animals in here? There's always something. No, normal ones. I would be careful sending anything from here. We ought in good shape to fight something should it become alerted to our presence. Mm. Okay. Well, what about after we complete it then? Because then by then, if once we complete our short rest, I could then at least send it out to take a look. And so then it's alerted, we know exactly where they are. I can see through them. No, it'd be better than... Looky. How are you feeling? I'm fine. Yeah, I got... Recovered. 
Uh, it's still work in progress, but I can hear myself. I kind of assumed you were going to say I feel fine. You know, you if, even if you like had like a big old cut in the stomach, you probably wouldn't tell me. But it's okay. If things get too difficult, please let me know because I can do something about it. Brother, a, a moment, please. Yes. I, I kind of pull. Kashad a couple feet away from everyone. A brain would close their ears because they have a really high passive perception. So they, <laughs> they'll, they'll know that they'll put ear muffs on so they don't hear accidentally. You know that I will follow you anywhere. And I will come back here to this place with you. But is forward now time to go? Or should we find a way out and come back better fortified? We will look for a way out of here. There are no reasons to risk your lives or any answers in a place like this. It's foolishness to enter in the first place. You know I would risk my life for you no matter what, and especially something as important and necessary as this, I just... Is this the best time? Do we have the right people? Is this... okay? No. I should not have brought you all here in the first place. It was foolishness on my part. Your lives are far more important than anything in here. I want you all to keep yourselves safe until we are able to leave. You understand? I'll, I'll do my best to keep everyone safe, including you. I, I just... I don't think we've ever done anything like this before. The, the troll was fine, but there was a way out, and whatever's going on back home with everything, it it's either so far away or so beyond us that it's not real. There's <laughs> known something like this would happen. You knew. It is similar to what happened with my other group before this. What led me to being what I am now. I should have anticipated it happening again. Do you think that what happened to you then could happen again? Should well, not allow happen? that to happen to you all. There is nothing to be worried about. I will ensure that nothing that nothing happens to any of you. You say that, and I believe you, but I also don't know if that's something that you can control. Will not allow any harm to come to any of you. If my word. No, I would do everything I can to protect everyone. It's your responsibility to ensure that you all survive. Nothing more. But as an order. I will do everything in my power to make sure the best interests of our house and our family are served. Careful. Is 
it's not an oath you can argue against. You are still not quite old enough to play with words, Mervina. <laughs> Which is why I am not best suited to lead. And due to the foolishness of one's leaders, sometimes those who are not ready are required to lead. Maybe if the leaders weren't so foolish, the ones who weren't ready to lead wouldn't be forced to. It does not matter now, anyway. We are here and we will deal with the consequences. Are the others all right? Are you all right? I'm surprisingly remarkably fine. And you? Hmm. All right. Nothing significant. I... Timmons... Timmons and Shea are at least breathing. Uh, I think they may both need some time to rest and heal up. I'm mostly worried about Abrea and what seeing all of this violence may do to them. I, I, I know that they're familiar with this circle of life and things in nature are particularly violent most of the time, but it's different when it's people that you care about. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do for that. I will have to leave all pray on to Jethrin. If that's what you think is best. Go and get some rest. We will have to move soon. Can't stay here forever. And walk back to Abrea and the rest of the group. Oh, I can unplug my ears now. <laughs> yes, you can unplug your ears. Okay. I hope I didn't make the tea too strong, Mr. Mintz. It is undoubtedly perfect, Sir Jethan. You can see she's going through and like wrapping some of her wounds, but it seems like she's also doing like some key work in order to make herself more vital. Hmm. Um, and she looks considerably better already than she did moments ago. After I've uh, given everyone tea and such like that, I just sit down close to Timmons, but I am uh, putting more, more, more plaits in the in the in, in, in the braid. But this is more like a, an, a fidget kind of thing, like a, a nervous or a worried kind of thing. You yeah. know, while I'm looking around. I think part of the way through the the short rest, like Timmons pulls out like one of the honey cakes and splits it in half and passes half it over to Jethro. And it's kind of nibbling on it. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, hopefully we have enough supplies on us to get us through whatever this place is. Well, while unforeseen, I'm confident in our abilities as a group. I could keep us full. You yes, see there? Are you able to make water? 
Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, not today. Maybe tomorrow. No, we're good I know for I don't now, prepared, but, but. Uh, I don't know what the rest of the structure is like, so we should be careful in our planning if we end up spending more than a day here. Mm. I pretty so sure I can find water probably here. I, I have good a nose. Oh, we have good noses. We can, I'm pretty sure we can smell for, for water. Sure. Yes, Mr. Simmons. Well, I was just curious if you had seen anything like those. I don't know what to call them. Hmm. Not 100% sure what they were. I mean, you know, it's just by the look of them, some kind of fiendish creature, I imagine. But uh, um, let me see if I recall anything. Could I do like a religion check? I don't remember if I did one before, DM. On um, those creatures? Yeah. I believe you did. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. it was, uh, there's honestly so many of those things, it's, uh, uh, I studied the prayers, I studied the forms, I know how to do ceremonies, but unfortunately, demonomicons and the like, uh, I was never the biggest reader. It's fair, unlike many of our, um, Heads of house. It's not really my cup of tea either. I should probably get a book like Master Rare has, except uh, related to these things. Mm-hmm. It's not a bad idea that if we believe this is going to become a frequent thing, we we'll perhaps do a little reading. Mm. Oh! Wait one second, and they're going to cast primeval awareness to see if they can detect within a one mile district a uh, fiend, celestials, fey, a <laughs> pretty much the whole gauntlet. <laughs> within a one mile, I'll give you the full listing in just a second. Give me a. It's such a large list. So, Jethan, what is Young Master Bray doing? Uh, I believe uh, it is sort of uh, getting the lay of the land, so to speak, and potential dangers. Mm. Mm. Try to see what's around. Uh, it is albaracious, celestials, dragons, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead within one mile. Mm. Master DM. Are you perhaps muted, Mr. Zack? There, no, I'm, I'm thinking. There oh. is a fiendish presence um, that is within one mile of you. And then there is something weird that registers differently. Like, you can tell that it's a different presence because it is both fiendish and celestial at the same time which is not something that's like written into the ability, but I'm saying for the purposes of narration, because this entity is both, it pops up as distinctively different. So there's like a fiend, but there's also like this weird combo. What is that? Okay. Um, so, which makes sense, there are, are fiends here, but that there's this one weird presence, I can't, it's, it's weird, it's like it, it has, it has fiend energy and celestial energy at the same time. I didn't know that was possible. It's really... Hmm? 
that's so unusual. I, I didn't either. Uh... I feel like I've heard tell of something like this before. They were called edge lords or something <laughs> along those lines. The Nephilim. Uh, <laughs> dark side. I was. <laughs> damn you, Adrian. Damn you. Oh, <laughs> um, so, so, so. Um, I believe you mean Frick. Frick. <laughs> yeah, you. frick. Oh no, that damn is a PG thirteen. Dang. 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 Damn is PG thirteen. Fortunately. The F Bob, yeah, we only get one of those. But uh <laughs> um, this is the time. Yeah, this is the time. Um so they'll look over and say, I I I, I don't know. Jetter, do you know what that is? Who's really good when it comes to like knowing fiendish stuff and celestial stuff? I don't know. <sighs> Unfortunately, uh, it's just well, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, it just further points towards a further area of study for myself. Mm. Well, at least we now know what we need to prepare for. Yes. I hope that helped. Um, while we're short resting, shall I make a perception check, DM? Just to... See if we're okay. Um, potentially. What are you going to be looking out for? I'm listening. Listening. Uh, sure. Mm. Okay. Fifteen. Fifteen. Um. You hear literally nothing coming from the uh, area around you, both forwards and backwards, okay. which uh, is a bit of information in and of itself because literally nothing is exceptionally uncommon. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. And I think we're safe enough here for the moment, just for while we recover our senses. But it is odd, though, uh, this structure. It's. Mm, well, I guess it's. Uh, what would be the word for it? There's air here, so it's not airtight, but it is sealed tight, if you know what I mean. Like you underground you might expect to even in an old ruin or some such you might expect that there's been a bit of wear and tear somewhere and maybe maybe some water might be seeping in you might hear a drip or you might uh, hear the sound of some kind of underground insect or skittering or a loose air draft or something like that but uh, there's none of that it's exceptionally sealed Mm. It makes sense if they were trying to keep a god here. They have to be pretty sealed, right? Hmm. Um. Well, if we are feeling better or more up to it, uh, once we're done, before we press on, uh, I wouldn't mind just looking at the door that we came through. I know, I realize it's shut, but perhaps I could find some kind of unlocking mechanism or something. It's worth investigating. At the very least, this is a highly dangerous place, and if possible, if we can get the injured, and perhaps even Abrea out. You've been so useful, Abrea. That mm. we we would be dead if not for you. Honestly, mm. just don't want to put you into more harm. Well, it's, it's fine. I I could do more healing. 
Are you good? Will heal you if I'm gone? I know. I know. Wait, I, I want to stay here with you all. I, I, I'll be safe, I promise. I, I know how to drop a roll. I, I, I only thing I got hurt for was the lightning bolt. Okay, maybe. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the door before we decide anything further. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, Kashad said I should go check, use my owl to go take a look inside to see what's be around when we're, when we're good rested. You should do what he says. Okay. Uh, how close are we to a short rest, by, by the way? Um, that depends. You can continue chatting or we can fast forward um, and say that you all just uh, complete resting until you feel a little better and have casual conversation and then move on. Okay. Yes, I think that sounds like a good plan. Okay. okay. Well, go ahead and complete your short rest. Um, spend any hit well, dice if you'd like to recover. Slots. Do what? I, I bought spell slots. Yeah, blah, blah. You're a sorcerer. You change stuff around all the time. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sensing some hostilities. Um, It's more just that I trust you and I don't feel like I need to hear about it every time, but if you feel like you should mention it every time, then, I mean, do you? I just, I trust you. It's all good. Oh, nice. In combat is where it becomes a little bit more relevant because you actually need to spend a bonus action on it. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. I at least yeah, get my teasing you. channel divinity back, which is nice. Yay! I don't get anything else back, but I get my channel divinity. God uh, gets eaten he... by the lion. No, uh, the lion has already disappeared. <laughs> yeah. Sad face. Well, um, let me have a look at the store. Okay. Uh, the one that we came in. Uh, would anybody care to join me? Uh, I will. I'll, I'll come and investigate. All right. I, I'm I will also go and see the door because I can see magical stuff. I, I guess I'll wait here and see the, my, look through my owl to see what's around. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, DM, would you like us to roll separately for investigation or can Mir roll with advantage with Jethro helping her? Repeat that question one time. Would you like uh, Mary and I to roll separately for investigation, or can she roll with advantage as Jethrin is helping her? Um, you can you can help her. It's fine. Okay, great. So I would like to roll Arcana to do a bit of a magical investigation. Good thing I had advantage because my good die rolled a one, Ooh. and then my um. If he die, roll a 14, and I get a plus 7, so that's 11. Or, I'm sorry, 21. 21. Mm -hmm. 21 investigation. 11 for the magical one as well. Um, yeah, okay. Um, and you're just searching the current room? The door. Door yeah, specifically, I'm... the the entrance door that we came in. Yeah. I'm okay. Specifically looking to see if there's any uh, locks or seams or anything that seems uh, like a push button or mm. a hidden mechanism. Yeah. Uh, anything like that. Maravina is relatively sure that there is no such thing. Um, which you're kind of like talking about a little bit, thinking out loud a little bit, and Kashad comes in and he's like, 
Well, that clearly means that it has some sort of information, uh, or it has some sort of arcane activation. I'm just not sure what. So you all are pretty clear that there's some kind of arcane activation, but you don't know how. Mm-hmm. There's whatever's holding us back. It's magical in nature, and I don't possess the skill or knowledge to discern, but it's it's beyond me, but as far as I can tell, we're locked in here for the foreseeable future until we find another way out. That would beg a tactical question out of all of us, then. Hmm... If we decided to fortify in this room for a full rest to recover all of our strengths and all of our fighting and spellcasting capabilities, then we could press in to this place with more confidence. However, there's no guarantee that something in there won't come here and we will have to fight anyway. Oh no, I will continue forward to see what I can discover deeper inside since I can turn myself invisible. Most of you can rest here a little bit longer. Ideally there will be another exit that we can find quickly. I do not agree with this course of action. I would second Miss Timmons. Not that you're incapable of proceeding forward and visible as a scout, but that we do not follow along at some distance. The only one capable of both going unseen and communicating at long distance. And most of you are too loud. Most of us. Not all. Those of you who aren't are in no shape to continue, nor can you afford to have you risking your life alongside me. Uh, Timon stands up and she looks almost like she did before the battle. She looks a lot more uh, healthy and she is kind of like back in best butler mode. Um... It is my duty to ensure your safety in particular. If you will not take everyone, but ask to at least take me. I will. And if we are not back in four minutes, no, there's trouble. Will you be taking? one of Master Abrea's animals with you. No. I don't know their specifics, but they may be able to get back to us faster, Abrea, in case something goes wrong. Abrea get here, or, or see at this moment. They're in, they're in full on uh, Stark mode, uh, <laughs> uh, broad mode of Morgan. Uh, they're looking through the the aisle to see what's around. So they they are. Oh yes, while we were investigating the door, you said you were doing that. Mm-hmm. So you would just see like a little like green glow like around them, and maybe like their eyes glowing a brick green. But they're like essentially dead to the world at this moment. 
Did I misunderstand? Are you going into the next room, like with the owl? Oh, the owl, yes. The owl would yeah, be, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Okay, so you're, heads, you're uh, actually... Heads, so. mm -hmm. You're actually leaving the room. Okay. Yeah. The first thing that you see is there is a rack which a with a bunch of daggers, mm -hmm. and all of the daggers are multicolored. There's like a red one, an orange one, a blue one, a purple one. There's like a a rack that has a bunch of uh, multicolored daggers. Interesting. Um, do they see anybody in the room or is it just those daggers? Itself? Um, no, you come to a crossroads. Um, so the owl can see like the way you're coming down. There's a way to the left, a way forward and a way to the right. So it's a straight up crossroads. Oh, I see. Um, I think they would head left first. Um, make me a wisdom saving throw as the owl. As an owl? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Do they get any bonuses? Nope, they do not. Okay, so this is plus one. Oh, but they can roll a 17 though. So that'd be an 18 total. Um. So the owl takes the full damage. It takes four psychic damage Ooh. and two piercing damage. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> um, and is stopped in its tracks. And as you, it like, honestly, it's a little jarring for you because you're like, uh, what just happened to this owl that I am right now? And then you finally get your bearings after a second and you're like, wait a minute. There's this web in front of me and you see this web that the owl has been caught in of blues, oranges, purples, violet, like green. It's this web of interconnected colors that all fall in on each other and the owl has been caught inside of it. You did not see it until you flew into it and then it came into vision. Ooh, well, the owl only has what hit points. So <laughs> after, after seeing that, uh, the area. So you have just enough time to see that before the owl disappears. Yeah. The Ooh. Ooh. Okay. That makes it. And as a, if you say we shouldn't see Andrea's animal, what? Oh. Uh, there's a problem. So there's, so daggers, in the next room, of different colors. Like five different colors, I think. And then if you turn left, you go, there's a web of different colors. And it, it, it destroyed my owl. Well, it, it can't destroy it. They just go back to the Feywild. But um, my owl is no longer. I can, of course, bring out another one or a rat or something. But left is not good if we don't, you can't go there because it hurts. Unless we solve what's going on with the deck. Um, I may have been slightly unclear. Oh. This is in the middle. Like oh. this web is like blocking the way forward oh. in any direction. So when it when the owl went to fly left, it was headed that like bearing and then <laughs> popped right into the uh, the web. Gotcha. No, that, yeah, that's my fault. Gotcha. So it did go out the door, turn left, it did crash the web. Literally the web was right at the entrance way to leave. Mm. Yeah, and you've, uh, you've okay. seen you've seen a good bit of that, so I will move you here for anyone on a roll 20 um, and do a bit of, like, revealing. So this is what you see, and then I'll do, like, the... That's the web there in the middle. Artistically done, sir, Quanta. And then yeah, I it's a very it's a very intricate. So I did not have know how to like actually draw this as the scribe. <laughs> it's very avant garde, you know. It's uh, yeah, you know, words versus art. It's different mediums of expressing yourself. Yeah, oh. I don't know. I think I'm definitely getting something from this art. I got a vibe from this. <laughs> <laughs> performance, performance art. 
<laughs> so we're at we're at which part of this? Like, are we coming from the bottom, or are we coming from no, the? None of you can see this yet, which is why I haven't moved the tokens. This is just what, like, this is the oh, picture yeah, of yeah. what Abrea saw through the owl. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's yes. what the birdie the birdie went splat into. Mm-hmm. So Abrea will look up and say, "Yeah, so there's there's these daggers that have different colors." And it looks like those daggers protect the room from going forward because when my owl tried to leave the room, it ran into this web of different colors and and it, it didn't survive. So you, it ordered, there's nothing in the next room, so we all could go to the next room, but um, we won't be able to go past that room until we figure out what's going on with those daggers. I will admit the daggers are highly tempting, but if this web can be avoided, it can't. It, it can't. Mm-mm. It blocks the entire door. So when you walk, you try to exit the door through that way, because there's only one way out besides uh, the other entrance way. And so if you try to go that way, you can't even turn left, right, or center because the, the second you go into it, you get fried. So you have to figure out what's going on with the daggers first. Yeah. I suppose that renders our previous conversation uh, moot point. Mm. We could technically stay here if you wanted to stay here for the night and then wait till tomorrow because who's going to go through the, per- the the web? No one can really go through the web unless unless there's another way to open it up from another side. Timeline wise, we're like maybe like noon or like early afternoon, right? Something so we, like tra- we traveled for like three ish hours mm-hmm. and then we went. Mm-hmm. I'd say with the conversation that you stopped to have, like one ish, maybe mm-hmm. one ish, two ish. Mm-hmm. It's a little early for um, bedtime. Mm-hmm. I personally would like to see what I can see in the next room before deciding what to do next. I would also like to offer an observation. Um, As a man of faith, Master Kashad, you had originally wanted to come in here alone and the rest of us came with you. We had decided to flee and we were not permitted to. And you had decided to go ahead alone, albeit with Miss Timmons. And once again, you are not permitted to go alone. This is just an observation. Oh, I see what you see. No, we should all go together. We work better as a group. We're stronger together than by ourselves. I agree. Kind of that job, Raya. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know what's going on with those daggers. Be careful. There you you want to be careful and take this seriously. You start. Take it seriously. Moving forward. Might I suggest <laughs> rather bizarre question, but does anybody happen to have any ball bearings? That would come in a pack, right? Or a vitreous pack? You usually have to buy them separately, I think. Uh-oh. There's one specific pack that I think does come with some, but I don't remember which one it is. Not one that I have, unfortunately. Hmm. All right. Well, in that case, I have an idea, if you will permit me to go in front. Uh, The spear is relatively long. 
Uh, perhaps I can just try and make sure the ground in front of us doesn't have any hidden plates, and you can all walk a little bit behind me while I poke at the ground. Okay, that's true. The, I was... the room was empty, but the bird was flying, so... Hmm, that's true. I do think checking for traps moving forward is probably a very wise idea. Hmm, my owl felt that the hard way. I shall do that. that be um, perhaps be, shall we say, 20 or 30 feet behind me, and I'll go slowly ahead and just poke a bit in front with the spear of where I'm walking. I would like to be probably closer to Jethrin than he's suggesting and also checking for traps as we're moving forward. Okay. Um, make a perception check with advantage. I'm literally just poking the ground, so... Mm. <sighs> well, that was you... 19. So, 19. But you are aiding her because you are indicating a specific path along which she can track with her eyeballs where to actually be looking for traps. So, okay. Um, perception. I'm, I, I'm a very kind and generous DM, as <laughs> you are well aware. <laughs> um, what did you roll? I rolled a nice. You said perception. With perception. It was, it was just for Mary. Um, oh. So, you do not see any indicators of any traps um, at all. In fact, the stone that makes up this dungeon is pretty, it's pretty polished. Um, like it, this was clearly built and with it cobblestone, but like polished, smoothed over and crafted and built intentionally. This is not like a accidental place that they just found. So it was constructed. So far, the way seems safe. It's... Honestly, I think it's what one would expect from a prison intended to hold something unique. It thank goodness you're, 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 thank goodness you're also not saying a prison for a god. I, I couldn't... Uh... I just want to think it's just something we're keeping in here, you know what I mean? I... I... I know that you are very devout in your faith, and... I... don't know that much about the gods or things that claim to be gods, but... There don't seem to be that many of them, and they don't seem to be able to be imprisoned. So Right? I mean, not as far as I know. They just seem bigger than that, so whatever it is that could possibly be imprisoned would not be a god? Just something masquerading as one. Yeah. Oh, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Otherwise, well. I think you know. we might be a little outclassed, and I'm not sure if we're able to run. But don't, 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 don't tell the others, especially Abrea. I don't, I don't like them being down here. I, I don't mind being down here. I, I would do this for Kashad. Absolutely, in a heartbeat. I just... Can I ask... Uh, DM, you, you tell me if I am... If this is not okay. But could I ask... Uh, Die to make an insight check for Mare? That is up to Die. 
Oh, yeah, I'll absolutely roll an insight check. Absolutely. I'll always roll a die. Ooh, uh, that is for sure that's a 16. Okay. Is he trying? No, he's concerned, but uh, that's definitely enough. I don't really have any. He's not intentionally trying to hide anything, but you you can definitely sense that there is uh, when you when you bring up Obrea being down here, uh, there is like a bit of. Slight sinking of Jethro's shoulders for a second, and then comes back up. Yeah. Well, once we get through this, maybe we can talk more in depth about that. About. About what? Mistress Mer- Mervina. Well, I guess now it's my turn to ask you to roll him inside chat. <laughs> sure. There's so many secrets. What's, what's happening? Um, oh, y'all have now asked for an equivalent number of rolls to me this session. That's just watch. Mine. Watch yourself, or I'm gonna get jealous. <laughs> That's just a nine. Um, yeah. If it, mm, no, no, no reason, no reason. Um, yeah, because Jethro is legitimately confused. Like he, he, he's often not aware that he's easy to read. You know. I am. Abrea is still just a child, and this seems like this is out of all of our depths, especially theirs, and that's it. That's all. Uh, as we're walking along, still checking for traps while we're walking into this room, it's not very, very long, but we are ahead of the others. I. I think Obrea is much less of a child than everyone sees them to be. And to be frank, I am a little sad at that. I think my time with House Chiron might end sooner than I had anticipated. How do you mean? I don't know if he really needs me anymore, Mistress Mervina. But don't tell them that they... You? They would feel heartbroken. No, you're... You're going to stay with us forever, and then your children are going to stay with our children, because that's... It's just the way it's been done. Right? Well, I think I see the daggers. Um, up ahead. Uh, you do, because this room is super short, and you have been walking, like, six inches at a time to drive this conversation to <laughs> yeah. the pace that you wanted it to be. Uh, um, but yeah, no, I mean, you see the daggers, um, are you, are you inspecting them a little bit more closely now? Uh, I was diverting as Jethrin because he's about to, uh, tear up a little bit. So he's diverting and saying it out loud for everyone to hear. Mare's going to put this on the back burner and allow herself to be distracted by the shiny daggers. And, uh, because daggers. Um. So, inspecting them a little bit more. Um, so, to answer Timmons' questions in chat, um, 
you can no longer see the web. You just see the daggers. But Abrea definitely knows that the web was there because it killed their owl. So um, they know it's there. Um, but you cannot currently physically see it. Um, and then as far as looking a bit closer at the daggers, um, there are a total of probably 20, 30 of them. Um, there are seven different colors, um, red, orange, yellow, blue, uh, green, indigo, and violet. You know, they don't teach the kids that indigo is a color anymore. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it's like new math. Um, but yes, amazing. As a child, I never understood what indigo was supposed to be. So good. Get rid of it. Get no. rid of it. This okay. clear Hold on. Hate it. color tone. Hey, this is it's, it's my time right now. Okay. I'd like to, <laughs> as the senator that has the floor, I'd like to reclaim my time. No more ranting about colors. <laughs> So passionate. Uh, I have a question. Okay. What, um, without getting so close, I'm just trying to see, like, does it look like they're all similar in terms of, like, maybe who made them or where they came from? Or does it look like a collection of a bunch of different daggers? So you're like inspecting their make to see if they all like originate from the same maker. Like you're basically asking, are they identical aside from color? Uh, yeah, basically like, I mean, you know how like, if you looked at a blade, you could probably say like, oh, this is like in the style of Derragonia or this is in the style of Telonia. Like just kind of generally looking at them. Do I think like, okay, they're kind of all in a similar style, like maybe the same country or do they look very varied? Very different. Definitely all in the same style. Are they all identical except for the color? Um, I don't know. You are not a blacksmith. That's actually pretty difficult to tell when you're looking for minute details. Go ahead and roll me a perception check. I'm just um, going to start throwing a bunch more rolls at you. I'm hmm. jealous. What's up, uh, Adrian? Just by the quick, the the quick way the daggers are, are they in rainbow order all correctly? No, they are like spread out differently throughout the rack, but you do like, it is easy to note all of those colors. Hmm. I rolled a three. There are, there are <gasps> What's a dagger? Is that, it a okay. knife? Is it a sword? Still, is it a dagger? You still know what a dagger is. You <laughs> haven't forgotten, but you are missing a little bit, especially because it like tricks your eyes a little bit since they're different colors. It's kind of hard to try to pick out the details you're looking for to tell like are these identical? Um, because you know, it's sort of low light. The way the light hits the like the different colors on the blade makes it look a little different. It's like hard to tell. For sure. Are there any missing in the rack? Like spaces that looks like they should be a dagger? Very, very good question. Um, yes, it looks like uh, there are three spaces missing. Did the fiendish things that were attacking us have any weapons that look similar to this? No. But the ones that are missing are a red, a green, and a blue, as far as the color spectrum. Perhaps we need to put them all in color order, Jethrin is saying out loud. Pick one up. I don't know, no. <laughs> Uh, Mayor will pick up. No! <laughs> walk over and uh, pick Six up the dagger to her. Kashad and Mayor both start uh, walking over. Kashad picks one up and Timmons goes, no! And then a moment later, Mayor Vina also <laughs> reaches up, picks out of a different dagger, and Timmons goes, no, again! <laughs> um, and uh, Kashad, you end up with a indigo dagger, uh, and Mayor, you have an orange one. Orange dagger. 
I hate you strange. both very much. <laughs> hey, what's wrong? Can I, can I see the string? Or the, the web? The you do. Whatever. While holding the dagger, you can see the web. Do I see, can I see the whole thing or just the one corresponding to the color of the knife? You can see all of the colors, but very good question because it does seem to make the color that matches your knife stand out a little bit better. A little, it's a little more vibrant. Can well, you guess only the knife can cut through the string? I had a similar thought. Shall we, brother? Is there a path to like what? So, so what color would be the easiest to cut at the moment, Nick? Like, what's the outer, the outer yarn? Mm -hmm. Red, orange, and yellow are all easy to get to. Um, green looks like you could probably get to some of the strands of it if you tried. Uh, blue, indigo, and violet all, all seem very difficult. Not impossible, but you would. You certainly think you would be risking potentially contacting other parts of the web. Does it Pick up. go in like rainbow colors for like the outside is like the red, orange, yellow, and then as you're getting more into the center of the web is when you get to the deeper colors of the rainbow spectrum? Is that? It's more like layered. Like there's layers of red, orange, yellow, and green that are all kind of accessible at the beginning, but the colors intertwine through different areas, but there's not just like one layer of red. If you okay. kind of try to like eyeball it, there's a couple layers that of red that are kind of interwoven through this whole thing. It's like a big cluster of a web that looks like someone took seven webs and then meshed them all together is what it basically looks like. I have a question. How, hmm? how big is the space between the different web pieces connections? Um, enough that like Abrea's hand would probably fit through it, but not many of the others. So hypothetically, if I was to wow shape into an ant, would I be able to crawl through all of the webs? Like, would I have enough space to where I wouldn't have to worry about touching it? Um, it would take you some time. It would be considered like double difficult terrain because even the ant would need to like move and try to wind a path that doesn't contact any web at all through. But you suspect that you could get any of the three directions that you wanted if you were an ant. Okay, well, I'll keep that as a backup. <laughs> they, they, they just thought of it. They, they just look up like, oh, okay. <laughs> and they'll keep it to themselves and see as a backup in case this plan doesn't work. I'm going to cut it, starting with the red one, with the red dagger. Um, okay. Make me a spellcasting modifier check. I have one of those. <laughs> I rolled a 17. Plus. Um, you start chopping at part of 22. the... 22. You start chopping at some of the red threads that are easy to get to, and you watch as cascading through the web, you see a large portion, not just of that original layer, but also deeper layers are just completely cut away in one swift motion. And it's very odd because it's like, Kashad really only contacted the first couple of threads in the front, and it just like rippling out from where he cut it with the knife, cascaded the web, just sort of fell away, landed on the ground, and then once it hit the ground, it disappeared. I would like to make the same attempt with my orange knife. Okay, make me a dexterity check. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh no, They're that's kind only eight. Waving with the knives at the air. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, they um, 
you're able to cut the thread that you have, but you don't make that much progress. Whatever Kashad did to cause the cascading motion doesn't seem to have worked. What are the two of you doing? Oh, they're cutting the whips. You can't see the whip because the only time I saw it was when the owl ran into it. So it's definitely there. I'm guessing they're able to see it now. Am I still close enough to the wall of daggers to pull a random color off the wall and toss it to Jethrin? Say a green one. Um, it's like 10, 10, 15 feet to walk back over to it and get a different dagger. Because he can't see the web if he's not holding a dagger, right? I mean, you don't know, but you couldn't see the web until you grabbed the dagger and then you could see it. So no. reasonable conclusion. Um, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll walk the 10, 15 feet since I'm not particularly doing too hot. Um, cutting through the web. Yeah, grab a green one. Toss it over. Oh. <laughs> See, it's, that's what they're looking at. Okay. Uh, well. DM, sorry, did Mare have any trouble letting go of the dagger? Nope. <laughs> we would have a grog moment. <laughs> so... Master Why? Shard, which Why? which color did you <laughs> cut? <laughs> Red. Uh, what's Red. the next closest one to me, DM? Next closest color? I don't think it's indigo. I think it's think it's green. <laughs> next, um, green next. You could you could hit orange, yellow, or green. I have a green on me, but uh, shall I try cut two? I'll give it a go. Can I try cut a green one? Yes, you can. Go ahead and roll me a spellcasting modifier check. Okay. Eight. Um... So similar to Maravina, you're able to make a bit of a dent into it. Um, the threads that you immediately cut fall away. Uh, but uh, roll me a wisdom saving throw. Sure. Ooh. Oh, oh no. Maybe need to change dice. Um, that's, uh, that's a four. Yeah. So get a new die. Uh, one. Um, two. Uh. Take one piercing and one psychic damage uh, for a total of two damage. Okay. Um, and uh, the back of your hand kind of hurts. Okay, first of all, ow. Uh, second of all, maybe green is not my color. Is me the dagger? Here you go, mask shot. As you hand over the dagger to Kashad, you realize the hand that was holding the dagger when you made the cut, uh, when you tried to go for the green, seems to have a symbol um, lightly etched into the back of it, which is what caused the piercing pain. Mm. <sighs> hmm. Well, this trap gives non-consensual tattoos, everybody, so be aware of this. Okay. Hopefully that doesn't cause trouble later on. Did you ask to pick up the dagger? I feel like you really don't have a leg to stand on here. <laughs> but I didn't ask for a tattoo, though. You took someone else's things. You were already stealing. I will cut the green one. I'm <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> Timmons is not taking a dagger. Yes. <laughs> um, a, a good portion of the green cascades and uh, falls away as it did previously, Kashad. 
God knows what the next color is. So he will cut the next color with the the appropriate knife. Because mm-hmm. my ability to remember patterns is just really bad. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd have to ask after each one, and it'll get irritating really fast. Um. Okay. So the next thing you cut is the yellow, and then finally the you access another patch of red again. Um, and you cut that, and that's when I need everyone, not a save this time, everyone takes five psychic damage. Oh, okay. As you watch the red webbing completely disappears and falls away this time. Did it give us another tattoo? Ow. Do you, like, kind of, like, low-key expect, inspect the easily visible areas of your body? Yes. Uh, no, no, no new tattoos. But you do still have the sam- the symbol on the back of your hand, and I will say it looks familiar. Uh, hmm. Where have I seen this before? Hmm. Wait, do we all have it or just Jethrin? Just Jethrin. Just Jethrin at the moment. Hmm. Can I roll a history check? Um, you don't need to. With enough time, like inspecting it. You realize it's the symbol on the that you saw re- recently on the front of this cavern before mm-hmm. you all went into it that marks the uh, that was translated as quote unquote betrayer. Uh oh, you better have a stigma. You better have a stigma, fam. <laughs> <laughs> well. That's the same oh, as this was outcast to spell magic side. Yes. I, I mean, oh, yes. you said the translation was betrayer. Mm. Well, I hope this does not cause problems later on. That you're casting dispel magic on Jethro and Kashad? No, oh, no, I so it, it, it's if only we had someone that could cast dispel magic. Ah, oh, okay. I'm gonna try to level. Okay, give me some time. <laughs> give, give, give me some time. Third level druid. I think I can do it. I think I can do it. I need everyone to to multicast into something that gives dispel magic. <laughs> um, and I do believe magic. that you might be referring to our local wizard boy friend oh, yeah. who has decided to uh, lick his wounds in the previous room and rest a little bit longer. <laughs> She's like, no, it's fine. You guys go on ahead. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna chill. I gotta play. Like, I just need to like do my like deep breathing exercises for like a little bit. Like, oh, you know, you know, I'll catch you. The Grizzly Don't call is very me. traumatized and needs extra love and support. And mm. y'all are just being mean to animals right now. <laughs> um, it's understandable. It's understandable. Uh, do I? While I'm observing this happen, I still can't see the web, but I'm watching everyone else move around. Does it appear to be just easier for Kashad overall? Interesting question. Um, roll insight. Face. Dis- <laughs> insight with disadvantage. Ooh, Ooh. interesting. <laughs> Intracrossant. Okay, I'll wrap it. <laughs> Intracrossant. Intracrossant. No, Chris Want. Chris Want. Chris Want. Oh man, Ooh. it was so good, and then it was it. Um, that is fourteen. Um, I don't know. He seems like a little bit better with a knife, but also that he was a soldier and Jethrin's used to like a little bit of a different weapon. Kind of weird that Mare didn't have an easier time with it, but also Mare doesn't really like stabbing stuff. Generally, it's more of like a on a need basis kind of thing. So maybe that's why, I don't know. Stabbing on a need stab basis. The direction that Kashad is going. Okay, hold on. I, I just have to ask this in, co- in character because he can't see the web. So, um, I'm not sure what you're doing, generally speaking, to all of you. Um, are you making a path towards one of these? And I pointed the three 
other hallways, like the branching hallways. I believe so. Moving forward. There are three forwards. I'm just wondering, are your efforts lending towards any of these being already open? I mean, because I was trying to just go straight ahead, not to the either to the left or the right, just straight ahead. Now straight down the middle. Can you be orange? I'm orange. I just thought that taking this thing down first and then making a decision about where to go was the way to go. Well, I don't know if anyone else has a headache, but I do, and I didn't do anything. So trying to decide the way to go forward. Well, I was going to ask about that because that hurt it. Can I just like change to like a spider or an ant and then just go through the other side? That way I don't get hurt when you all make a boo-boo. As God Um, finishes the orange and anyone holding the knife sees all of the orange fall away, everyone takes five psychic damage. Oh, oh, yeah, like that one. Um, Ow. Um, mm, yeah, headache, IRL and in game. I would incredibly appreciate if you didn't do that again. I think, Aubrey, that if you attempted to go through there as a spider (laughs) and one of the things were cut and you took the damage as a spider. Wouldn't you then hop back into your regular self and take more damage because you'd be right in the middle of the webs? Oh, yeah. I would have to go through first to make sure no one would actually put the web on top of me. But then at the same time, I'm pres- I, I, I would think if I on the other side that I wouldn't get hurt when somebody cuts the web. But, I mean, I uh, at the same time, I could also stay here and suffer with everyone. <laughs> no, no, I'm not no, entirely sure. convinced that if you were to go through, you wouldn't still suffer. Because mm-hmm. I have not touched a single thing. I'm not in the web, near the web. I don't have a dagger, and that hurt. Mm, that hurt it. But would it you just be this room? Wait in the other room? Oh yeah, let's try the other room. We don't hear Shay screaming for for pain, so maybe it's just this room. Unless she's already dead. No, wait, wait, they'll they run over to go through. <laughs> Timmons looks furious, but follows up right <laughs> so Remember did. how I threatened that there would be a party wipe incoming? <laughs> well, guess who is not dead? Uh, Shay. Shay is a bit grumbly. Something, something more coffee. Something, I'm annoyed. Something, let me sleep, but uh, not otherwise injured. Uh, they'll uh, they'll oh, just ask. What's life like today, Shay? <laughs> they'll ask. Oh, did you get any headaches while you were waiting here? What? Okay, no headaches. Okay, yeah, this room is safe. I just got blasted with lightning, Abrea. Of course, my head hurts. Oh yeah, without yeah that yeah. So I, I made another one. Like like just suddenly a pain just appeared. But since. Since it doesn't oh. seem to be a... F- you don't feel anything? No. No. Okay, this room is safe. Let's test that theory, shall we? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stay here. <laughs> With Shay and and his coffee. I, I'm staying back a shot because I have more hit points. <laughs> I, I spent all okay. those hit die to get back up and you guys... <laughs> Fight! <laughs> <laughs> I will stay okay. by Kashad and Jathrin. I'm doing all right ish so far if it gets dire. I. So, Kashad, Mare, and Jethrin are staying, correct? Hmm. This is correct. Are you continuing the process of cutting through the web, Kashad? Matching colors, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, um, as you continue, 
Everybody takes another five psychic damage. Um, now that there are less less of you, as the yellow falls away, um, when I say everybody, I mean Mayor, mm-hmm. Jethrin, and Kashad. Um, mm-hmm. But you do notice that it is more intense now that there are less people around. Mm. How... <sighs> the amount of damage was the same, the intensity was higher. How are everybody's brains doing? Uh, because to be completely frank, after this, I will probably need to rest again. But I'm, and I know that I'm quite hardy. Exactly. People should go back. I just think we're doing this the wrong way. Maybe matching isn't the way to go. Can I try to... What's the next color in the web in front of me? Green. Kashad, can I see the red one? Uh, Take the red one and slice the green... Attempt to slice through the green. Um. Okay. Make me a dexterity saving throw, Maravina. Mm-hmm. I keep rolling threes for the love of God. Uh, it's a nine. So. Um. I don't want to make this too graphic, but essentially what happens is the metal superheats and falls over your hand, uh, thus burning and also sticking to your hand so you can't really get rid of the burn as it slowly drips off of your hand. Uh, The dagger basically superheats and melts into your hand uh, and slowly drips away. Um, I need you to take 10... Uh, fire damage. I am going to cast Cure Wounds on Barovina. This is my last spell slot. Uh, Yes. At uh, my lord, obviously, don't let yourself fall unconscious cutting waves. No, no. There's a point where you Won't. can stop. My last for a oh, while, yeah, that was... Be careful. Nine hit points of healing to you, Mare. As all my spell slots are gone. No, yeah, we'll definitely take a break. Um, think- I would say it does help an awful lot as the magic sort of repairs some of the damage to your hand. It also forces more of the liquid like off of your skin as it's repairing your skin, uh, which does add a lot of like, uh, I guess it brings a lot more comfort uh, than the slow dripping off as it kind of like pushes some of the liquid off. Let's go wait with the others for a while. Uh, I think so. I think our first idea may have been our best. What's that smell? Is everything okay in there? That just smells burnt. It's just chicken. No, I'm, I'm just trying to lighten the mood. Unfo- uh, uh, the- I'm assuming I, it smelled burnt. If, like, if her hands was getting yeah. melted for what you call it, that'd be a strong smell coming through. He had the pres- passive perception of a 19, so he's like, yeah. What, what's that smell? It's horrible. It's. It's fine. I, I'll, I'll be fine. I, I had a theory. I tested it, and it didn't. I was wrong. Everything okay there? Uh, well, I think Master Kashad will continue until such a point as it is time to come back and rest again. 
Okay, well, just just be careful. That was an odd smell. Yeah, I think it's going to get a lot odder. I think I'm going to sit out for a bit. Oh, go join. Um, how many times a day can I summon the line? Twice, right? Um, twice per week, I thought. I don't know. It doesn't actually say on the actual stats there. I don't know if you gave it to me in a different thing, and I didn't write that down, but... Um... I thought we said it twice per week. Let's say three times per week right now. Okay. So, I know it'll be taking damage as well, but, you know, it could be that Kashad cuts one string that lets them all go, and then there are things behind there that want to chow him. So, I am going to send the a new lion just to... And that'll be my twice... What? Twice per week? You said... Well, I, I have an IRL headache. Did you say two or three times per week? Um, you can you can have three times for now. Okay, so this will be my second time for this week, but um, I will send my my lion to go and keep a shot company just in case of bugaboos and freaking mimics and how what close other to him? things. Just um, right, right by guarding him, basically, or. Uh, where the wall of the web would have started because he's making his way in right yes he is okay so where it would have started yeah just there. got it um so as you finish the green kashad um you and the lion both take um, 11 psychic damage. Before the lion appear, was there a difference when I was the only person in the room? Yes, when it was just you, you felt a lot more comfortable and were not feeling any pain in your head. Like to get me killed. Oh, so they need to have no one in the room. Okay. Uh, you're, you're, you're able to, uh, to shout back if you want me to send it back. That's th- I'm gonna I'm gonna drink a health potion. I don't want to do it, uh, but I have to drink a health potion. I, don't adjust, want to die. I can adjust your hit points, Mr. Lion. Why are you not letting me adjust your hit points? I could do it. Uh, for I'm you. drinking a health potion, DM. Okay. That's completely valid. Ah, there we go. Five plus two, so seven. Right, I'm guessing, are you going to let Jethro know that, hey, take this lion out of here? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I will go and let them, I will go and tell, deliver the message. Jethro, please return your lion to your side. Very well. Then I will go and continue. Oh, my uh, yes. Yeah. And you finish the process without taking any more damage. <laughs> so you would have did it by was- <laughs> Does this count as another short rest for us? Or, uh, uh, it has not really been that long unless you want to hang out and wait. Well, we're waiting for Kashad. After Kashad is finished. I will cast invisibility on myself. Um, okay. You do so. Then I will go back far enough so that way I can initiate my mental speaky thingy. And then I will go forward and then let them know. I'm going further ahead. It appears that you being near me is making things a bit more difficult. And I wish to know... If that is based on number of people, or if there's something about me specifically, I will return within five minutes. To whom is that message sent? Melvina. (laughs) I am going to sigh. 
sigh out loud or you sigh mentally? Both. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sigh mentally at Kashad, and I'm also going to sigh audibly enough that Timmins can hear me. Timmins. Yes. Kashad is determined to venture forth alone without us. I understand that the way is easier and opens to him in a way that it doesn't for the rest of us. But you and I both know that this is completely unacceptable. Did Mr. Gashad say he would return? Of course he has every intention of returning, whether or not this place will allow him. Just to be clear, while they're like panicking, you totally dip, right, Kashad? Yep, 100%. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stand up and move into the room with the web. Okay. Just to be a little bit closer if I hear like someone screaming. And you are going straight, Kashad. Is that correct? Yeah, full stream. Right down the middle. So there's nothing but darkness. Not... Oh. All right. Simmons. You come with me. And leave oh. Abrea and Jethro. Will you watch over Abrea as we go? And just stay All here. Eyes. <clears throat> All eyes, yes. Wait, I'll go with you. Wait one second. And then they'll just use their wild companion to bring it out a new owl. Dude, now I can see. All right. You're here, Kashad. Most suspicious thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm casting detect magic. You sense no magic in the, well, that's completely a lie. Uh, you sense a couple of weak magical auras inside of the chest. Uh, assuming that you get close enough that the chest is within the range of detect magic. I'm buying source. I'm buying a spell slot with sorcery points. Okay. Then I'm casting Sea Invisibility. There is nothing invisible in the room with you. No scrying sensors or other wise and various entities. There's a treasure chest here. I'll say that to the mentally. The telep, telep, to Say that uh, to the telepathy. Sure. Um, we will come back to what you all decide to do about the chest after a break. Perfect. Hi, and we are now back for the second half of Reclamation. Unfortunately, Adrian had to step away. He was catching a bit of a headache, so we wish you well, fam. And we'll see you back in a couple episodes, actually. But uh, until then, we're transitioned over to our fantastic DM, Zach. Take it away. Okay, right before break, we had left off with the head of assholes, brave, invincible Kashad had found a interesting chest and sent back word to Maravina to let the others know about it. Oh. Okay. I guess we'll follow the suit then. Um, um, okay, I'm gonna do some maneuvering to get more spell stunts. Okay. Roll me a perception check with disadvantage, Kashad. Don't do me like this. 
Rob Stark? Oh, God. That's a, that's a natural one. Rob Stark? Don't worry. Don't worry about it. It's all good. I had I had C invisibility up. Does, does that help? True, but nothing's invisible other than you. I'm going to... Oh, darn. I am invisible. If I cast anything else, I'm going to lose invisibility. I think, unfortunately, as much as I want it to be different, that you actually can switch spell slots around while you're invisible, though. Mm -hmm. It's it's fine. Yep. And your magical prowess, that's a feature. That's not really a spell. So you also could technically do that. If you, but sound like you might be running low a spell spell points. So I'm not sure. <laughs> can I check for traps? Have I done that on already? the on the chest? Just in the air. In the air. You're looking to see if there are any uh, oxygen molecules that have had traps put on them. It is about webs. Anything? Yeah. Um, Trap roll, doors. Roll perception. Illusions. Oh, goodness, that's an eight plus. That's a ten. Doesn't appear to be. Nothing's I'm invisible and no ahead. obvious physical uh, signs. I'm going to go ahead and go ahead. Nothing happens as you walk closer to it. I will check the chest for traps. Okay, roll perception. Yeah, what is the roll? Oh my goodness, it's a 10 again. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I'm not good at this. <laughs> this you, do not, you do not sense any traps. But as you're <laughs> kind of peeking at it to investigate, you hear a voice coming from the lock on the chest that says, Hey, who's there? I step back. It's okay, you step back. <laughs> nothing. Nothing happens. I wait to see if anything happens. Uh, a couple seconds later, the voice comes again. Hey, who's there? I heard you. I heard your footsteps. Hello? What are you? You see an eyeball pop up and just blink on the physical surface of the lock. What are you? Well, I'm me. And what are you? Well, it's hard for me to say, because I don't know what you are, so I'm not sure what your people might call me. It's getting us nowhere. Some people call us are mimics. You... Of course. And what is it that you want? Hmm. Well, I could really use some food. You got any food on you? I'm starving. No. Well, I'm afraid I can't let you have any treasure if you didn't bring any food. Are you the only thing in this prison? No. What else is in the prison? Well, there's at least you. And... Well, I don't know, really. I saw some demons once. What sort of demons? I don't know. They were big, scary, hard to eat. Do you want it to eat? Mm. Well, I could really use like if you had any sort of like uh, roasted, dried, or salted meats. I mean, that'd be pretty good. You know, raw, cooked, whatever. Um, 
I guess I'd eat some vegetables if you have that, but, uh, you know, I don't really want to. It's kind of disgusting. Also some rations. You toss uh, some rations towards it? Yeah. You watch a big old mouth extend out of it towards the ground and scoop up the rations into it, and then uh, you see the mouth uh, peels back onto the lock, and you watch as it chews on the lock. You can see the mouth chewing. Anything else oh. useful that you can tell me? Well, that was a little bland, but uh, <laughs> I definitely appreciate it. I'm not so hungry anymore, at least. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. There's something really old hanging around here somewhere. It's like, uh, wow. well, I don't really know. I, I just saw it walking by one time. Uh, it's kind of like a some sort of cat, but a big cat. Did it speak to you? Mm. Nope. I was definitely hiding because it looked sort of scary. All right. What can you tell me about this place? What was its purpose? How long have you been here? Well, the purpose was to be a prison for those nasty guys, but I think he's stuck in the cell at the end. As far as how long I've been here, um, I don't know, 40, 50. Right. Well, is there anything else that you can tell me before I decide to leave? Yeah. What is it? Well, like a lot of things, but I guess I don't really know what else you want to know about. For example, you might not know, but I can do this. And you watch a tongue comes out and lick up all of the crumbs from the mouth on the lock. Leaving. Okay. Well, good to see you. If you have any more questions, feel free to. Oh, you're gone. Okay. Bye. I will go back. Can you do so? When you get to the web room, you'll see Timmons, but I guess we can't see you. Not at the moment. (laughs) Oh, Shad's back. Oh, what are you doing here? Following you, trying to keep you safe. Less following, more just strategic positioning, I think. What did you find? The unable. There's a mimic creature in there. Very talkative. Uh, The chest that man mentioned, yes? That is correct. Well, did it tell you anything useful? No. <laughs> it told me very, very little important information. And one important information it knew was information that we already had. Did it say left or right? Because that would be a nice... I did not ask, and it would not know. It has hidden itself from some sort of creature. Mm-hmm. Should we ask? You may. I will be unable to clear any of the other paths until you two aren't in here anymore. Or you can go and rest. Uh, the web is completely gone. Yeah, you are free to, free to move as you wish. I cut all of it. Oh, it's empty completely. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I'll go down another when, path because why not? 
when that color falls away, um, it just it's completely gone. Mm-hmm. So when you broke through all of the colors to get fully to uh, the end, it's just everything was gone. You all can go and speak with the mimic if you wish. I'm going to go and check out one of the other paths. I would prefer to keep you close and follow you. Abrea kind of makes their way to like the edge of the door. It's like, I can keep my owl at a distance. So therefore it's not in the same room as you, but they can still see you. Well, that's an idea. Could, could your owl go ahead? Oh yeah, they could go wherever they want. Check out the paths and at least a little bit and see if one seems more promising than the other. Mm, I could do that. Okay, uh, give me one second. And they will kind of sit down and they'll see the green um, rune appear around them and their eyes starts to go green. And you just see the same green appearance go through the aisle as they take off. Um, I guess head left first. I think that the, the, that was the original path they wanted to do was left until they ran into the <laughs> to the web and it got fried like turkey. So uh, we're gonna have a round two. The owl is just like revenge of the owl. I'm making this left if, if it's the last thing I do. <laughs> going left. Yeah. Kashad, are you also going left? You all want to see the mimic, don't you? I am. Um... I would yes. be lying if I said I wasn't curious, but I can also understand if that's not a priority either. I think that lead them to the mimic. I will. You all walk into this room, and as it hears the footsteps, you see, you hear, I guess as you walk into the room, coming from the other edge of the room. Holy, there's a lot of you. Oh my gosh. Oh, just to clarify, I didn't go inside. It was just me, those three. It's it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. What is your name? Uh... Lucky? <laughs> I think that that's a stellar name. Hello, Lucky. I wonder if I could get some information from you. Well, sure, but do I get to know your name? Timmons. Hmm. Timmons. Not as cool as Lucky, but not bad. I agree. I agree. Um, you've been here for a while, yes? Yeah, like 40 or 50. Years? I don't know, really. How do you count between what what gets you to 40 or 50? Precision guesswork? (laughs) Okay. To be fair, I'm not incredibly good at time myself, so. Um, have you, do you you have awareness of the other rooms here? Not really, but I've stuck around a little bit. Did someone place you here or bring you here, or did you choose to come here 40 or 50 ago? I woke up like this. <laughs> yeah. Huh. And I guess it's not very common for you to see other people. There's the big cat thing and the demons. Sorry, did you say big cats a thing? Yep. 
I look at Kashad. Oh, you, are you muted? Yes, you're there's a there is a creature that it is hiding from. I mentioned that before. When you say big, like tiger big, or do you know uh, what a tiger is? Tiger. N- no. Fair enough. You've been here for a very long time without talking to people. I guess. Well, I think usually maybe I jumped on back. Usually I just eat the small demons because the big mm-hmm. demons don't really seem to care. So you've been here a very long time without speaking to anyone. I guess so. Like I said, um, I normally just eat like the smaller demons because the big demons don't really seem to care. Fair enough. Are you hungry right now? Mm, Yeah, I had some really, really bland food that the other one gave me. But, uh, I could really use some meat. Would I reasonably have some meat? Like, I've, I've packed a bunch of stuff for travel, and I assume, but... I don't know, does Timmons carry pocket jerky? <laughs> I, mean, I was thinking more like a cured meat for, like, you know, something you take on the road. Uh... We the answer give a bag of probably and a bag of refrigeration. Probably, bad, that's okay. probably not. But uh, there are dead demon bodies you could try to drag in here if you wanted. Excellent. Uh, give me a second. This might take a while. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go find some dead bodies and drag them over. All of them or one? No, just one. I mean, it, I'm not gonna spend all day. Feeding okay. the mimic. <laughs> you, you watch. You all watch as Timmons comes into view, huffing and puffing a little bit, dragging along this very heavy demon body. It's honestly a little bit heavier than I expected. <sighs> uh, would this suffice? Uh, the lock. Uh, mutates and opens up comically wide and reaches down and swallows the body of the demon whole uh, in a single bite. And then you watch as the lock uh, comes back to a normal shaped lock and you just see the little mouth on it, like chewing. And it goes, "Mm Yeah, that's pretty good. Wow. All right. Fed, how about something maybe you can give us? Mm, okay. You want some treasure? And you hear it as the lock click falls off of the chest into the ground, and the chest opens, uh, revealing treasure inside. Mm. Yes, I would very much like treasure. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to just hope that it doesn't eat me, and I'm going to take whatever I can reasonably just scoop. If there's, like, items, I'll take items, and I'll just get all the gold. Or um, if it tries, whatever. If it tries to eat Timmons, I will explode it. <laughs> there, there, is, there is a couple of gemstones, um, a dagger, um, and uh, three potions. <gasps> oh. What are healing you potions? Because we really need healing potions. <laughs> <laughs> what you taking, Tim? Right. You said there were a couple of gemstones, three potions, and a dagger? Yeah, so two gemstones, three potions, one dagger. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. And no the, money. The, 
There's actually no coins in the chest. Gotcha. Interesting. Um, I'm going to look at Kasha to be like, do you know what any of these are? I know what any of those things are. Oh, I'm <laughs> to I'm I, my wisdom. <laughs> I, no, you can <laughs> cast spells to try to determine if you'd like, but no, I'm, I'm literally like asking: Have I seen these before? Like, is this the uh, dagger is unfamiliar to you? Be? The the potions. Uh, two of the potions do seem like standard healing potions, so you can tell that you don't know what the other potion does. And the gemstones are, you know, gemstones. You can sell them for money or turn them into jewelry. Well, those gemstones are, as they appear, at least I think so. Uh, those potions appear to be healing, and that one I don't know, and I don't know what the dagger does. It will need to be identified properly. Hey, Loki, um, is this like a take one kind of situation, or... I did do a lot of heavy work to get that deep in here. It was pretty tasty, but uh, if you're going to take all of the loot, you got to at least leave me some coins to entice any other travelers, you know? I might have some more visitors soon. That's incredibly fair. I've got a couple of coins that I'm willing to throw in. Uh... Sir, I thought they were golden because of reasons. You put what in? I was going to throw. 30 gold. 30 gold? Okay. Well, that'll do nicely. Travelers love shiny gold coins, I think. I haven't actually... Well, you guys are actually the first travelers I've ever met. But, you know, I assume. I mean, you're doing a spectacular job. <laughs> So, if I understood that interaction correctly, I just took two gemstones, three potions, and a dagger, and we replaced that with 30 gold? Mm-hmm. Correct. Oh, 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 okay. in this world is very unique. <laughs> All right, we want to deal with potions. I'm not sure, but like, making sure those potions could be a, a great use. We would be doubting that probably the next 10 to 15 minutes. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I'm a stash, I'm a stash them all. We are winning. I'm going to stash them all, except the dagger I'm going to look at more closely to see if it looks like something I can or should wield. Um, Give me a perception check. Thank you, Oak. And also, what languages do you speak? I speak Becknian, Common, Daragonian, Dwarvish, and Goblin. Got it. 17 on the perception. Um, the dwarven word for fire is inscribed on it. Mm. Um, and uh, the blade has like a distinctive red hue inside of the, the metal. Like... Um, it would be like looking at a rock where the rock is like, uh, you know, a black colored rock, but it has like red specks in it. The blade basically looks like that. It's like steel, but it has red specks in it. Uh, as I finish looking over, I'd be like, well, Lucky, you have been an excellent host and uh, companion. Perhaps we will see you on our way out, should we find an exit. Okay, bring more food if you would. Um, I That demon was really tasty. Can you walk? Just curiosity. Oh, yeah, totally. And you see the lock sprouts, like, little spindly legs and just starts, <laughs> like, running around you in circles. Would you like to walk along with us and... At such occasion, there is a dead demon. You can just eat it. Hmm. It's an interesting proposition that you bring. Free demon food. But what if the, what if the big cat tries to eat us? Are you going to protect me? Uh, 
to an extent, I mean, I will protect the group. And if you're part of the group, then yes. If you're here, pretty, I'm not going to protect you. That'd be pretty wishy-washy, Dimond. Well, what I'm saying is, if you're traveling with us, then yes, I will protect you. If you are remaining here, I'm not going to, unfortunately, be able to come back in order to protect you from the cat. Okay. Are there any more dead demons around here? I think there are two of more. Can we take a break to go eat those guys? Well, I'm going to eat them. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> I mean, sure. Okay, awesome. And you see the lock starts to, on its spindly legs, like, kind of trot out of the room. <laughs> Should be interesting. <laughs> uh, the dagger looks fiery to me. I mean, with the whole word for fire on it and everything. I have to have she identify it later. Mm. That what that says. Uh, I will admit my studies did not uh, include dwarvish. Why did and you like oversight that? on my part, I suppose. Well, I also know the word. <laughs> <laughs> Many times, young, uh, young Master Kshad growing up, and I had interesting conversations in Dwarvish. Some <laughs> <laughs> um, affinity for other was... languages, but... It is a beautiful piece, whether or not I understand the runes or not. Um, after it is identified, I think we can discuss uh, where it would best go. And we can also get this other potion identified. See what it may do. The, the, the potion, of course. So you wouldn't want to drink anything that you didn't know for certain what it would do, but I mean the, the dagger though it's probably a harmless to the wielder <laughs> It is in prison yes. a sure angelic prison <laughs> Literally everything here is so completely safe <laughs> You I'm sorry, were you there when I took it. 10 points of damage because you and Kashad were waving things at invisible strings? I, more look at your hand. Look at your hand. Yes. I instructed Have you all to stay behind to avoid um, being hurt, but... Changes are... Yeah. Well, I, I hope they aren't permanent, but... You do what you must, and you wield what you must in service to your family, and sometimes that means taking a risk. And sometimes it means prudent forethought. Would you like to tell us about your new friend? Yeah, yeah, prudent forethought. Those were tasty demons. <laughs> Hi, Loki. <laughs> Sorry, you guys were just kind of going on a little bit, and I thought, you know, I'd live in things up. <laughs> no, I liked it. It was a valuable addition to the progress of this conversation. And I tuck the dagger with fire into my belt. <sighs> All right, Tom. Are we satisfied? We should actually set, set ourselves up to take a rest while we're here. It is exhausting. I think we've dealt with enough pain for one day. You want another rest? I believe that would be best. We, can, we could at least scout. Where's Obrea? 
<laughs> a, a brand's been back at the <laughs> room the entire time, like <laughs> using their owl to pretty much scout in the entire area. Like pew. But as they were as they were talking, mm-hmm. you you probably with the owl saw like a walk running along the ground uh, <laughs> back towards where you you were sitting. Oh, so uh, so Abrea uh, said the owl left the turn the left corner while they went to go talk to uh, the what you call it. So while gotcha, yeah, things so, are getting a bit confusing. No worries. Well, um. I've got bad news for you. Uh oh. Um, your owl gets eaten. Oh! Do I like no stealth check? Is dumb nuts? <laughs> uh, yeah. No, no stealth check. Just the nom noms. Okay. Um, <laughs> before it gets eaten, it sees a big cat. Uh, and you're like. Wait a minute. That's a really big cat. It kind of looks like a lion. Are those eagle wings? And then it gets munched. Oh! <laughs> it's like, oh! Ah, I'm sorry. Wow. I thought those eyes. Oh, is it? Is it big cat? Of course they can see in the dark really well. Mm. Okay. Well, at least I know now what's left. Um, they'll use their last wild shape because they they talk about taking a rest anyway. They'll use their last wild shape to go, um, bring out another one and head and turn right to see what's towards the right. Thank you. One second. No worries. I have them labeled, so I need to find the need to find the proper map. Okay, here we go. This is what you see. Um This I, one is Is this under fog of war? I don't think it is. Can you see the map? Mm-hmm. Perfect. Yeah. This this is what you see. It's like a very weird shape. Um, you can continue going down. There's like some outcroppings that look they got look, looks like they got dug out by something at some point. Um, but there doesn't seem to be any like creatures or otherwise dangerous things in this area. Perfect. They feel happy for the owl. They're tired of their owl getting numb numbs, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> So, that makes sense. Yeah, so when they come back to the water right and they see that it's pretty much safe, they'll have the creature uh, have their owl fly back to them. They'll be like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we didn't we we'll do a much better job of making sure you're not spotted next time. Cool. Yeah. Maybe I have a Kashad cast invisibility on you. That, <gasps> that would be perfect if they cast invisibility on you, they won't even see you. And then you can fly everywhere. And then they'll just wait for Kashad and others to return. <laughs> I wasn't sure how many. Do you all return to the first room to take a rest? Okay. Yes. So, okay. And I think. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Abre. Oh, um, let's see. So. I have good news and bad news. The good news is, is if we turn right, there's nothing in the immediate location for us to right. It's nice empty space. If we go left, there is a really big cat that thought my owl was dinner and ate it. It had wings and it looked like it could fly. It was huge. Do I have an inward knowledge of sphinxes? Do I have an inward knowledge of sphinxes? Can I just know what a sphinx see is? I've read about these things. A Wait, cat with wings. I mean, Wait, are these animals or monstrosities? I mean, I mean, I mean, hold on. You know what? They're people. Be nice. They're <laughs> <laughs> uh, sentient beings. Okay, well, that's what I'm trying to figure oh out. Like, were they, were they like, were they like part of my slate wing? Are they in my slate wing book, for example? Or 
asshole? <laughs> Absolutely not. I no so. way. I no, no, so. no, 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 no. <laughs> That's what I was just trying to make the sure. Slate wings are very bad at their jobs. <laughs> Well, I mean, it this, be, it's probably not an edible. This is super not their job. <laughs> Scope of practice, man. You gotta draw the line somewhere, and I think um, putting sphinxes on the outside is probably a good <laughs> line to have. Yeah. So, versus griffins, completely it, different. In terms of what in-world knowledge might you have about them, um, give me uh, either a history or an arcana check. Which one you choose will lend itself towards different information. Gabby, I'll make us? one as well. Um, yeah, good job. Again. Oh God, why am I rolling like shit tonight? It's a nine for history. I think fifteen it. for Arcana. I got sixteen Arcana for history. Too. Um, too much, too much at the same time. Uh, so Mary. Um, sphinxes, um, rhymes with pinkses, and pink is kind of cute. That's what you got. Um, Timmons, what did you get? 16. 16. Um, we'll come back to that. And then Kashad, what did you get? 15, Arcana. I think you said Arcana. Yeah, and then Timmons, you had history? Correct. Uh, so 15 Arcana... Um, you believe uh, them to be creatures deeply intertwined with time, um, and you know there isn't a lot of information or study about them. Um, Timmons has heard one historical tale sung by a couple of uh, royal bards in particular um, that uh, they like to kind of it's not a well-known story, so they like to pull it out for the nobles sometimes, so they can like, you know, hey, I'm one of the good bards that knows the good stories. Invite me back and pay me lots of money. Um, so you've actually heard about it once at like a royal event uh, a number of years ago. Um, and essentially the way that the story goes um, is that uh, an, an old man, um, left town to go adventuring in his old age, believing that there was nothing left to do with his life in retirement um, other than adventure. Um, and he returned to town a year later as a young man in the peak of his health. Um, somehow uh, doing everything that he could, um, knowing things that he shouldn't know, but proving himself to be the individual who had left from this village to go adventuring, just returning in the peak of health as if he had found the fountain of youth. Um, and he blamed it on a creature that fits the description of the creature that you have heard. This little winged lion creature that Aubrey is describing. From the stories I have heard, such a creature can do fantastical things, which in my book, particularly in this environment, would mean to tread cautiously, but maybe we can use it for our advantage. What, what could it do? Um, things like restoring youth or, I mean, I assume kind of magical changes and transformations. I don't know what the man, it, it's been such a long time ago. I don't remember if the story said what the man had to do, like if he had to complete some sort of challenge or, I don't know, find some sort of coded word, but his reward was extraordinary. Wow. Wait, would you want to be younger, Timmons? Timmons blue screens for a little bit. 
and then is like, there are certain advantages I would have were I younger, but it's not something I actively would want, generally speaking. Hmm. Well, if you ever decide you want it, just let me know. I can help you out. I mean, I can't get too much younger. If I go there, they'll turn me into a baby. So I don't. I I can't help no one in a baby carriage. So, um, but if you, yeah, if you, if anyone ever wants to be younger, I guess I I can help you out with that. Oh, could you, could they turn you back before you became like with the your meeting with the creatures? There's no point in obsessing over what happened in the past. If we meet this creature, we'll discuss things with it then. But do not worry about fantasy of some unknown magical power. If the creature yeah. has the ability to make you younger, or make a person younger, assuming these stories are true, Seems like they have the power to do a great many things. Potentially. Could possibly advance someone or something in years or increase the power and vitality. Wait. Timmy's, are you saying you don't want to be younger because you're afraid if you try to go get it and you don't get it, you'll be disappointed? Uh, no. Um, it's more that I'm quite happy with the life that I've led. And there are certain things about being young that are inconvenient. Oh. That you kind of don't realize until you've grown out of them that it it wasn't all that great. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I mean, it would be nice to be around longer and kind of stay with the family, but overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with where I am in life. I was more thinking, like, um, I, I don't know, like, if, if we needed to try and gain more vitality or, or experience or knowledge like maybe it's not just the reverse of time maybe it could be an addition or a growth how about the first growth they could do is not stop eating my owl my owl didn't do anything he just flew by to, uh, just to take a look and then no nope, there's that's all she wrote that was mm. probably not very many owls here i imagine that the um, creature may be as hungry as our friend Lucky. Oh, wait, who's Lucky? Oh, wait, I think I saw them through the owl. Is that the little box that was running around everywhere? Is Lucky in the room with us? Oh, yeah, Lucky is 100% in the room. Yes! Oh. Aurea? Apparently, this family likes to collect new new friends. This is Lucky. I like to think that we are sharing our privilege and status and offering homes to creatures that wouldn't have them otherwise. Wow. Hi, Lucky. You're a box. Hmm? You're a box. You talk. I'm a, I'm a what? See the box is a lock. Are you a box? Or a, oh yeah, cause you're a lock and a. Wow. See, I understand nature, animals. I don't understand this. This is. Wow. Nice to meet you. So you're gonna kill some more demons so that I can eat them? Well, not the not the cat creature, cause the cat creature it seems like maybe nice. Oh, God. You see it, like, scuttles into the corner and, like, crouches down like it's trying to hide. Where's the cat? Oh, it's to the left. You don't have to worry about it. As long as you don't go to the left, you'll be fine. Well, I'm definitely not going there. 
well, I should focus on resting for now. Oh, okay. There will okay. I am uh, pretty tired after all those demons I just ate. I think I'm going to take a nap and Lockie like sits down in the corner. Oh, wow. How are you doing that feeling? What are those demons that have barbecue sauce on it? Hey, uh, DM, I got a question. <laughs> yeah, I got an answer for you, maybe. <laughs> um, I have a herbalism kit and I'm proficient with it. Is it possible to use that to try to identify the third potion? I don't know if that's how it works at all. I'm just wondering if I can leverage my knowledge of something in order to make it into... Well, you know that if you take a sip of the potion, that generally you can tell what it does from sipping it. Uh, uh, how much is it? I mean, you know what? Screw it. I would like to take a small sip of the third potion. <laughs> it is a potion of invisibility. I have two potions of invisibility now. Sweet. Why am what? I casting invisibility if everybody got potion? And then it Tibbis just, potion of invisibility. Did it Tibbis just roast bear when we like, we gotta be prudent? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, there's only so much you can do when, when surrounded by chaos. And sometimes in order to not be buffeted by choppy seas, you just gotta go with the flow. <laughs> and that means taking a sip of a potion to see what it means. Uh, Rand says welcome. <laughs> Great potion. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. This is the worst that can happen. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Adopt a mimic. It's cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can, can. I, can I taste this the other two just to make sure they're healing potions? They are potions of poisoning timids. No, they're healing potions. <laughs> I mean, could be. Don't know. No, they're, they're healing potions. That's how Timmons died. Honestly, I would be more concerned if we went into this random god prison that seemed specifically tailored for Kashad, and within it, inside of a chest locked by a mimic, there were potions specifically designed to poison Timmons. Exactly. <laughs> the universe knows that where Kashad goes, I do, and I'm the bigger threat. <laughs> oh damn! Those are <laughs> Godly drop. That's a that's a kind way of looking at the situation. <laughs> so is there is there anything else that you all would like to discuss before you take your short rest? No, we're good. Okay. Yeah, we're set. You take a short rest thinking and musing about the strange cat creature in the other room with wings. Locky, who is at the end of the rest, arising from his quick little cat nap, quick little lock nap, <laughs> and everyone can complete a short rest that we will pick up there next time. Ooh, what an episode. Wow. Wow. Thank you all so much for coming by for this fantastic episode. And so many great things happened. I mean, think about it. How many individuals, how many campaigns could say that they have a mimic as an NPC? Not too many. <laughs> Not too many. Uh, so once again, I hope you enjoyed this campaign. If you like what you see here, make sure to join our Discord. We, sh we should see it in the description section below. We would love to hear your thoughts about the campaign. And we'll be back for uh, the second half of Rec. I'm mean, not second half, sorry. The next episode <laughs> of Reclamation. It's a bit late, but until then, farewell for now. Bye.